All right, here we go. Which sport is better? Volleyball or fencing? I have a lot of energy today, so I'm gonna see how many of these first round matches I can film. I'm slowly burning through my energy. That, that last one on a tennis and boxing, tennis or boxing, boxing or tennis, kind of did, did, did a good job burning some energy. So we're on to volleyball or fencing. How are these sports similar? Both sports require an aspect of respect kind of for the sport and for the people one is playing or competing with. Uh, I would say on volleyball, that's kind of more on the team side of things, be it beach volleyball in your partner or indoor volleyball in your team. And then fencing is a high respect sport. Like a lot of the uh, mannerisms kind of and etiquette, there we go, etiquette of fencing is founded upon respect for your opponent. So in that sense, volleyball can have a lot of trash talking between teams, um, at least at this point in time. So in that sense, volleyball can be a polar opposite to fencing, which is built around respect of one's opponent. And so what's my history with these? Well, volleyball's one, that's just kind of like, Somebody always had a net. We had a net. Uh, it's easy to set up. It's perfect for social gatherings if you want something where you can uh, set it up and just kind of play around. You don't have to have too many people. Like, um, depending on the size of the social gathering, it might not be too much of a stretch. That was one that was even played at geology field camp, um, stuff like that. And then I went to a volleyball, my competitive side. I, there were a bunch of sports that were kind of at the same in the same season. I was a swimmer. Volleyball ended up not doing in part because of the trash talking aspect, um, at least for like my school level. I did, however, go to a volleyball camp, and that had some extremely competitive people um, who were, who were like club volleyball players and on school teams stuff like that, and. So I went to that with one of my friends at Shoreline Community College. I think we were in middle school. It might have been like this summer between middle school and high school, something like that. And so, yeah, I'm more on the volleyball side of things. I'm not really a spiker. Like, I, I think that in part is just the social environment that I grew up in and kind of played volleyball in. I was a late bloomer, still growing in my late 20s. And so I was shorter than a number of people. And so, uh, the tall people always like to spike the ball and so it's just like all right well I can set and bump and serve and that kind of thing so yeah that was kind of what I did I didn't really spike the ball uh, in part because there were people who were taller who really wanted to and then there were people who were, were same height or shorter and they would uh, for some reason the spiking the ball drew a bunch of people who just really wanted to hog the ball and spike the ball I was not that person <laughs> um <laughs> So you need that balance in the team. And so it was just kind of like, oh my gosh, all these people just want to spike. We need some balance. So that's kind of the role I took. Fencing. I was part of fencing club at Shoreline Community College. That would have been, I would have been 16 or 17 when I did that. Uh, before that, well, I had, so how did I end up at fencing? Actually, it's probably a good question. Because as a kid, I really liked to play like, on guard with sticks and I, I really liked kind of like fighting with sticks and but like long wooden sticks so that they're kind of comparable in size to a sword and I really loved swords like I was obsessed with swords and my parents were like no swords in the house and that kind of stuff so I'm not gonna go to my room and pull out a saber and come and show it and that kind of thing because no so no swords allowed in the house um <laughs> and so there were two sports. Kendo is a martial art sport, if I'm recalling this correctly. Where it's like big, I think you, it can be bamboo, that like big bamboo sticks. And then fencing, which like how I put it, I have my, think of, they're really small, teeny tiny swords, like in terms of like thickness and that kind of thing. They're still long, like long like a sword, but they're just a lot. Uh, smaller rounds so that you can't actually kill your opponent um, <laughs> kind of thing. You still have to put on protective armor because it is still a long metal toothpick. Um, it's kind of, it's 
they're, they're long metal toothpicks. And so there's the three weapons are an EP, a foil, and a saber. I like sabers. Sabers are the biggest uh, of those little swords. And so in fencing, the etiquette I mentioned is very much around respect. It's about uh, making sure you do not hurt your opponent. So all the protective equipment that's worn in fencing is to protect you if you get hit by a sword. And usually, at least in practice, the tips of the sword are tipped. So there's something on the top of um, that covers the tip of the sword so it can't pierce your armor and stab you, that kind of thing. Um, yeah, but w fencing is interesting. Both sports you can yell. Uh, in fencing, yelling is meant to disorient your opponent. In volleyball, I guess there's trash talking, but there's also communicating with your team members about getting in the right space and who's going to take the ball, that kind of stuff. Uh, so both are vocal sports in very different ways. Um, and unless you equate, or I guess the trash talking is similar to trying to disorient your opponent, uh, opponent in fencing, but like in fencing, it's more of like a grunt, um, or ho, oh! you know, just something like that where you're making sound. Um, both are confined spaces. Fencing is more confined, like forwards and backwards. So I would say in terms of which of these is a better workout, Fencing is surprisingly difficult. It requires certain leg positions and arm positions, and the amount of endurance you have to have to be able to hold these positions as you're wielding a weapon and fighting and trying to anticipate where the weapon, like, it's not just you with a weapon, your opponent has a weapon too. So there's like uh, learning how to anticipate, like, a, a large metal toothpick coming at you that could potentially like do damage um you still feel it when you get hit like especially with the saber um even though you have armor on or protective equipment on <laughs> like yeah it's it's a it's a it's a it's a surprising it's one of the sports i would say that is surprising and how high intensity and how tiring it is because it's like literally you're squatting the whole time, but you're fighting and like you have to be able to move quick and yeah, it's it's a very surprisingly intense sport, at least for me when I started it um, in the formal sense at community college. And then, oh, okay. So that's fencing. Which is the better sport? It's a tough question. I think this is like kind of a, random comment but like I, I was small in high school and the <laughs> clothing and fencing to actually look good in the clothing that w one wears like to how like not that people who don't it doesn't feel right it doesn't look good but like if you're going for like the looking good angle you have to be teeny tiny and that was something that like I hadn't ever realized until I had to put on the protective equipment was I was just like wow, these people are really long, and then I didn't realize, and then I was like, they're, like, you have to be so tiny to be, like, a very, like, an aesthetically appealing fencer that, like, fits into these clothes, okay, not aesthetically appealing, a very proportional fencer, um, in physique, like, they're tiny, um, fencers are tiny, especially at, like, the Olympic level, uh, so that doesn't necessarily correlate with looking good, uh, but I actually, okay, I will say that about fencing. I like, I was a swimmer and like water polo and a player and stuff. And we wore teeny tiny little suits and, or not teeny tiny, we wore swimsuits and water polo suits. And in fencing, you can be fully clothed and your head is covered. And so there's a, I would almost say there's that aspect makes it more relaxing. I don't know. I I always kind of feel weird when I'm put on display, and so fencing allows me to focus uh, not on feeling like I'm on display, but on the sport itself. So there's not really a, let me go check my hair and make sure it's just this. I want to look good when I spike the ball, kind of, which a lot of girls do with volleyball. Like fencing is like, you can't even touch your hair. Your hair is covered. <laughs> and so I love that um, there's no nonsense in fencing, um, and, and, and especially because you do have a weapon that could do 
like serious damage um, to you or your opponent. Like if we're being honest, <laughs> especially at the beginning phases when one's learning how to handle a sword, like. You don't hold it right you grab it the wrong place the tips not on it something like that you could cut yourself um it, it could it could lead to injury uh, so yeah so there's that not there's a no nonsense part that like i found kind of like not badass but kind of badass like where it was these people are actually incredible athletes like i think one of the more stereotypical ones is like a lot not all by any means but a lot of ballerinas when i were growing up i was growing up were really skinny but they have a bunch of muscle like they're very good athletes and fencers are the same way they just don't have the need or desire for display of that physique that a ballerina does um kind of or a swimmer or whatever um it's it's one of the cool and Part of why I was drawn to it is I was like, I get to be covered up in this sport? That's awesome. Um, so yeah, I, I, I found that very, very appealing. As to which is the better sport? Well, volleyball, I think, is more fun in like a social context, but it can also spiral out of control really quick versus like fencing it doesn't really ever spiral out of control. Volleyball is one where the speed of the ball, like the strength of the players increases with the Olympic Games. I know like a, a spike from an Olympic Games level athlete would be different than my spike, like in terms of how fast that ball is moving and how hard it is to bump or whatever, set or whatever as it comes over the net. Uh, but it is a sport where like it look the how hard it looks matches how hard it is like i know it would take a lot of training to get to that level but like it's also a doable sport fencing on the other hand is like one where so like sword fighting is really common in movies or at least like pirate movies and like some of the older movies I mean, so it might not be fencing itself but if you broaden the perspective so like you're including sword fighting I will say the respect I have for the sport, I would have <laughs> never known had I not tried fencing. Let me see if I can rephrase that. So like before I started fencing in a formal sense, like as part of a club, I did not realize how hard it is to get it right, especially when it's not choreographed. So in movies, they're, they're just doing these steps they've been told, it's all choreographed and that kind of thing. Fencing is not, like, it's for real fighting with a weapon, with a sword, even if it's a tiny metal toothpick sport, sword. That, like, and how hard it is to retain one's balance while in this kind of squat position, not really, but kind of, to be able to move forward and backwards in that, to not lose arm position, to retain one's strength, to anticipate unchoreographed moves. It's like, and there's a bunch of different ways you can attack. You can tip a sword off balance, like if you can tip your opponent's sword just off balance, like there are many, 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 many different moves you can make versus like in volleyball, there's like bump, set, spike, serve, like it's super restricted in what you can actually do. Um, and so I'm actually gonna go, I'm gonna go with fencing. And I'm gonna go with fencing because of how much harder it is than it looks like it is. Like, you know, like when I see stuff, I'm like, oh, that'd be easy. And maybe it's just, it comes across as like, it'd be easy because it's all choreographed. So it's not actual fighting in a movie um, or a lot of movies anyway. And so it's all choreographed. It's already um, laid out what to do. And so like the fencing and like not, you have to figure it out every, as you go and you don't have a restricted, do one of these four things you have to figure it out for yourself. Uh, I, it's a, in that sense, there is, and especially with the not being on display, like you get to be covered, like you can take and focus all of your energy and effort and mental like force onto like, uh, like I wanna say creativity. Like it's, it's a very surprisingly hard and a very surprisingly creative sport because you don't have to, I'm not concerned with 
is my ponytail just right? Is my rubber band going to give out? And then my hair comes like down or something like that. Um, no, it's all, it's all like covered anyway. So it's a, there, you, you get to take and channel that energy that in other sports kind of gets pushed aside and be creative in every single movement or you're working on executing every single movement correctly and it's the etiquette and the culture of fencing is very much founded on and centered around respect for the sport and your opponent and that i think is awesome not all sports are that way so this one which sport is better volleyball or fencing surprisingly probably at least kind of surprisingly goes to fencing for me